In this lesson, we will talk about constant coefficient linear homogeneous systems in the plane. Much intuition can be obtained by studying this simple case. We use coordinates x comma y for the plane as usual, and suppose P is a two by two matrix. Now we consider the system in any of the forms below. The system is autonomous because the derivatives only depend on the dependent variables x and y, not t. We can say they are independent of time. As a result, at every point x comma y on the coordinate plane, we can sketch a vector and create a vector field. We will be able to visually tell what the vector field looks like and how these solutions behave after finding the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of matrix P. For this section, we assume P has two eigenvalues and two corresponding eigenvectors. And there are six cases to consider. Number one, the eigenvalues of P are real and positive. Number two, the eigenvalues of P are real and negative. Number three, one eigenvalue is positive and one is negative. Number four, the eigenvalues are purely imaginary, meaning in the form of plus or minus IB. Number five, the eigenvalues are complex and the real part is positive. And number six, the eigenvalues are complex and the real part is negative. For case one, suppose the eigenvalues of P are real and positive. We find two corresponding eigenvectors and plot them in the plane. For example, if we have the two by two matrix with entries one, one, zero, two, the eigenvalues are one and two, and the corresponding eigenvectors are the vectors one, zero, and one, one. We have the two eigenvectors plotted below on the coordinate plane, but also notice at this point there are no arrows on the eigenvectors. Let x comma y be a point on the line determined by the eigenvector v for the eigenvalue lambda. That is the vector x, y is equal to alpha times the eigenvector v for some scalar alpha. Then the equation below follows where the derivative of the vector x, y is equal to alpha times lambda times the eigenvector v. This indicates the derivative is a multiple of the eigenvector v and hence points along the line determined by the eigenvector v. As lambda is greater than zero or positive, the derivative points in the direction of the eigenvector v when alpha is positive and in the opposite direction when alpha is negative. So we draw the lines determined by the eigenvectors, which are sketched in black, and then we draw arrows on the lines to indicate the directions. Notice the arrows, which are on the eigenvectors, are pointing in the direction of the eigenvectors because both eigenvalues are positive. We fill in the rest of the arrows for the vector field, and we also draw a few solutions, which are sketched in the figure below, figure 3.6. The picture looks like a source with arrows coming out from the origin, hence we call this type of picture a source, or sometimes an unstable node. For case two, suppose both eigenvalues are negative. For example, take the negation of the matrix in case one, where now the entries are negative one, negative one, zero, and negative two. Here the eigenvalues are negative one and negative two, and the corresponding eigenvectors are the same eigenvectors of one, zero, and one, one. Which are already graphed below. The calculation and the picture are almost the same. The only difference is that the eigenvalues are negative, and hence the arrows are reversed. So again, notice now the arrows are pointing in the opposite direction of the eigenvectors, because both eigenvalues are negative. And the result is the figure below, figure 3.7. We call this kind of picture a sink or stable node. Case three, suppose one eigenvalue is positive and one is negative. For example, if we have the two by two matrix with entries one, one, zero, and negative two, the eigenvalues are positive one and negative two, and the corresponding eigenvectors are the vectors one, zero, and one, negative three. We reverse the arrow on one line corresponding to the negative eigenvalue. Notice the eigenvalue of negative two has a corresponding eigenvector of one negative three, this vector here, but because the eigenvalue is negative, the arrow is pointing in the opposite direction of the vector one negative three. And then for the eigenvalue of one, where the eigenvector is one zero, notice how the arrow is pointing in the direction of the eigenvector because the eigenvalue is positive. We call this picture a saddle point. Case four, suppose the eigenvalues are purely imaginary, that is, plus or minus IB. For example, if we have the two by two matrix with entries zero, one, negative four, and zero, the eigenvalues are plus or minus two I, and the corresponding eigenvectors are the vectors one, two I, and one, negative two I. 
consider the eigenvalue 2i and its corresponding eigenvector 1, 2i. The real and imaginary parts for the eigenvector v times e to the power of 2i t are shown below. We can take any linear combination of these to get other solutions. Which one we take depends on the initial conditions. Now note that the real part is a parametric equation for an ellipse. Same with the imaginary part, and in fact any linear combination of the two. This is what happens in general when the eigenvalues are purely imaginary. So when the eigenvalues are purely imaginary, we get ellipses for these solutions. This type of picture is sometimes called a center, which we see below. Case five, now suppose the complex eigenvalues have a positive real part. That is, suppose the eigenvalues are a plus or minus ib for some a greater than zero. For example, for the two by two matrix P with entries one, one, negative four, and one, the eigenvalues turn out to be one plus or minus two i, and the eigenvectors are the vectors one, two i, and one, negative two i. We take one plus two i in its eigenvector one, two i, and find the real and imaginary parts of the eigenvector v times e to the power of one plus two i times t, which are shown below. Notice the e to the t in front of the solutions. Because of this, the solutions grow in magnitude while spinning around the origin. Hence, we get what's called a spiral source as shown below. And then finally for the last case, case six, we have complex eigenvalues and a negative real part. That is, suppose the eigenvalues are negative a plus or minus ib for some a greater than zero. For example, if we have the two by two matrix with entries negative one, negative one, four, negative one, the eigenvalues turn out to be negative one plus or minus two i, and the eigenvectors are one negative two i and one two i. We take negative one minus two i and its eigenvector of one two i and find the real and imaginary parts of v times e raise the power of negative one minus two i times t, which are shown below. Notice in this case, we have e to the power of negative t in front of the solutions. The solutions shrink in magnitude while spinning around the origin. Hence, we get what's called a spiral sink, which is pictured below. And before we go, here's a summary of the behavior of linear homogeneous two-dimensional systems. I hope you found this helpful.